last time we have uh, discussed this GMA uh, controller. This partly we have seen this how this uh, CPU is getting bus request from the uh, DMA and how these lines are going high impedance state and then the bus here that is going to the memory that bus control is transferred to the DMA that is there here where I am hovering my mouse here is a uh, DMA so that is getting a bus grant signal and thereafter from there on the control uh, of this bus is from IO devices to the memory here, the, where I am hovering my mouse, here memory suppose say, the bus control is not between now this memory and the CPU, rather it is between this memory and to the DMA and to the IO devices. Is that clear? Last time that was the thing that we had discussed. So if you have any doubts, yeah, everyone there I am requesting you just unmute and talk to me. Don't type anything in the message uh, chat window. The problem is uh, I have to come out of this presentation this way, this way, and and this way I have to go to this meet uh, tab and then go to this uh, you know messages here. So this way uh, it is uh, uh, you know time consuming. So that's why I'm requesting everyone there. What you have to do is you have to unmute yourself and talk. So what is your doubt? Whatever your doubt is, even if screen is not seen as some other technical problem, that also you please speak out. Okay, I'm going to the presentation now. So before presentation, I have to see once uh, here everything is all right or not. Uh, you are presenting it, that's all right. Sometimes what happens if I'm coming here, it's going into the pause state here, this point. Here. So everything is all right. Let us go to the presentation. Okay. So last time from the, uh, this slide we stopped our discussion. Go to the this uh, DMA controller. In this DMA controller, this uh, you have this uh, figure four shows the block diagram of a typical DMA controller. Let us go to the figure uh, four. This is your figure four. In this figure four, what you have? Oh, uh, anyone having any uh, query? Okay. So this is your uh, DMA controller. You see this uh, DMA request uh, signal arrow is coming to this control logic, and uh, from this control logic, things that are going are this DMA acknowledge so these two are coming from IO device IO device is actually requesting to the DMA control logic that transfer is required maybe from memory or it wants to put data uh, onto the memory so that is what this IO device is looking for either IO device wants to put data put data into the memory or it wants data from the memory. So what IO device is doing? IO device is requesting DMA. So this DMA, if you see here, there are DMA select signal, register select signals. These are coming to the control logic. Read and write. There are two signals. They are bidirectional. And you have bus request that is going out from this control logic and bus grant that is coming inside to this control logic if you see the arrow carefully this for this bus grant it is coming to the control logic and there is a interrupt interrupt is going from this dma control logic out outside so from this what we understand is this uh, you know this one uh, this one here if you see this CPU if you see this CPU CPU is getting a signal called bus request you see bus request and the arrow is here inside to the CPU so meaning you have to go back here where this one this control logic 
there is the, the bus request here is a br bus request it is going out meaning this entire entire uh, uh, block diagram is dma controller this dma controller has got a control logic this control logic is requesting bus grant that's why this bus grant is going out this control logic is of dma controller part of the dma controller so that has gone this dr has gone out that's why arrow is like that now if you see bus grant is coming in coming to control logic so this bus grant coming in means from where it is coming in if you see again this one here this cpu cpu has sent out a signal called bus grant so that is going out so going out to where going out to here this this control logic bus grant is coming in so that's how these things are happening here this is the control logic the part of the dma controller now this address and this data bus these are actually the uh, you know uh, communicated to the uh, memory so this 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 uh, control who has to take this dma has to take so how the dma is going to take that is the agenda that we are going to study uh, with this uh, dma controller Hope this is clear. The brief introduction of this figure four shows the block diagram of typical DMA controller. So the unit communicates with the CPU via data bus and control lines. Unit communicates which unit? DMA controller unit communicates with the CPU via data bus and control lines. If you see this figure here, this figure having data bus. And the control signals are these are read and write, and any part of the signal this interrupt as in the form of interrupt, and uh, this, this sometimes even this bus request is also a sort of uh, control signal. So, but specifically read and write are the control signals. So now what is happening here? The unit communicates with CPU via the data bus. The data bus you already have seen here. It is there here. This, this is data bus. This one and control lines. Control lines here you have seen here. Read and write. So these are the control lines. So that unit is communicating via data bus and control lines with whom with CPU. So now what is going to happen next? The registers in the DMA are selected by CPU. Through the address bus by enabling the DS that is DMA select. DS is an acronym, shortcut or short form. DS. DS is acronym of this DMA select. And RS. RS is acronym for this register select. So CPU through address bus by enabling DS DMA select and RS register select input. So the registers in the DMA are selected by CPU. How CPU is picking registers that are there in the DMA through the address bus by enabling DMA select, D select, and R select. Go to here this one here figure. You have this DMA select, DS select. Frequently, I am using DMA selector DS. So DMA is D, and the select is S. So DS nothing but DMA select and register select. So these two are coming to the control logic. Who is communicating through this? Here the CPU is communicating. CPU is through this address. Through the other one is through address bus. Through address bus by enabling DS, that is DMA select and RS select inputs. The registers in the DMA are selected by the CPU. So here, this control logic 
will be selecting the registers within the DMA through by select by enabling this DMA select and register select. So go to this again here. You have read and write, read and write. Again, these are uh, the acronym is RD and WR. Inputs are bidirectional. So these are bidirectional. If you, these are control signals. When BG, that is bus grant, input is zero, the CPU can communicate with the DMA registers through the data bus. Bus grant is actually coming from where? Bus grant is coming from? Anyone? Bus grant is coming from who is? CPU. Yes, that's great. It's a CPU. So when this input is zero, meaning not enabled, bus grant is not enabled, CPU can communicate with the DMA registers to the data bus to read from or write to DMA registers. So the, this is uh, something uh, important to pay attention. Read from, read from or write to. It can read the registers from DMA or it can write to the registers of DMA who is CPU when bus grant is zero. When bus grant is enabled, the CPU relinquished, meaning it released when bus grant. This bus grant is coming from CPU. So when bus grant is high, meaning CPU is not having any control over the address bus and data bus. So CPU has released or relinquished the buses and the DMA can communicate directly with the memory by specifying an address in the address bus and activating the read or write control. The DMA communicates with the external peripheral through the request and acknowledge lines by using prescribed handshaking procedure. What is handshaking procedure that in past uh, sessions we have seen? So this one here, if you go back here, this one, at this figure, at this figure, uh, this bus grant, it is zero. When it is zero, CPU can write to data registers of this, uh, inside this uh, DMA, some registers are there. So the, those registers could be uh, here if you see address bus buffer, this is one register, address register, this is another register, word count, this is another register. All these are, if you see carefully, all these are bidirectional. All these are bidirectional. And these are connected to a lo local bus. Inside there is a local bus. This local bus is called internal bus. And this internal bus is communicating to the data bus buffers here. This data bus buffers are, again, if you see carefully, these are bidirectional. And these are going to here. This is in the where I'm hovering my mouse. There you have the CPU. So in, uh, to the CPU, they are going. From the CPU, inside CPU, we have memory. They may go directly to the memory or via CPU they can go. When when all these things are happening, when this bus grant is zero. When bus grant is zero, who is having control over these uh, buses? These buses, this uh, CPU is having the bus, uh, control over this bus. Let us say this is a, a part of the, uh, you know, your bus, uh, I.O. bus, if you could be able to recollect. Your I.O. bus has got address lines, data lines, and control lines. So, meaning these are part of the bus. So, these are the part of the bus. We have to get hold of this bus. Who has to get hold of the bus? EMA has to get hold of the bus. How it will get hold of the bus? That is what this bus grant and bus request. Go here again. This one. Let us one more time summarize this one. You have seen this is the block diagram of a typical DMA controller. 
unit communicates with CPU via data bus and control lines. The registers in the DMA are selected by the CPU through address bus by enabling the DS and RS inputs. The read and write inputs are bidirectional. When BG is zero, that is bus grant is zero, the CPU can communicate with the DMA registers through the data bus to read from DMA registers or write to DMA registers. When BG is one, that is this bus grant, the CPU has released, relinquished the buses and the DMA can communicate directly with the memory by specifying an address in the address bus and activating the RD for read or WR for write controls. The DMA communicates with the external peripheral through request and acknowledge lines by using prescribed handshaking processor. This one, this two, we have seen already here. Uh, this one, DMA request and DMA call. These are the handshaking signals. These two are the handshaking signals. So this is the handshaking here. This. This one we are talking about. This one. DMA communicates with external peripheral through the request and acknowledge lines by using a prescribed uh, handshaking process. The DMA controller has three registers. How many? Three. This address register, word count register, control register. This we have seen. These are very quickly here. This address register, address register, word count register, and control. Three registers. These are the three registers. That uh, this one. DMA controller has three registers: address register, word count register, control register. The address register contains an address to specify the desired location in memory. That is very obvious. The name itself is the address register. So. In the memory, earlier in the paint software, we have seen uh, that uh, last session. Suppose say it, uh, IO device wants to communicate from 64 to 128, this location. So it is that information is kept in the address register. The address register contains an address to specify the desired location in memory. The address bits go through bus buffers into the address bus. The address register is incremented after each word that is transferred to memory. That is very obvious, 64 to 128. That is the our target that IO devices wa uh, uh, it, it wants to put some data in, inside that uh, 64 to 128, or it wants data from 64 to 128, meaning address is specified in, inside the address register. And also uh, the count how many word, the word count that is also specified in this word count register. So since it has read, suppose say it has read at a 64th location contains, so there should be some mechanism which go to the 65th location. So for that, the address register is incremented after each word that is transferred to memory. The word count register holds the number of words to be transferred. This also last session we have seen in the paint that 64 to 1, uh, 128 means let us say that 64 plus 64. So the number of uh, bytes to be transferred are 64. So how many needs to be transferred? 64. The count, that count is held in the word count register. How many words needs to be transferred? That one. So this register is decremented by one after each word transfer and, and internally tested for zero. So word count is decremented and address is incremented. These two are in opposite direction happening. Address address is incremented and word count is decremented. How long till it becomes zero? So the moment it has word count has become zero, it means all words that we are looking for 64 to that 128, meaning total 64 words that we are looking for has become zero. So meaning there are no more words to. Uh, so address register will not increment from there on. So the control register specifies the mode of transfer. 
or register the DMA appear to the CPU as I/O interface registers. So this one we have seen in the modes of transfer. In the modes of transfer that is uh, three modes of transfers we have seen. So interrupt initiated I/O. So that one programmed I/O and uh, some other uh, DMA. This one. So I/O all registers in the DMA appear to the CPU as I/O interface registers. So CPU. But DMA, DMA is treating them every register like a I/O I/O device. I/O device. So this uh, this one has come where anyone uh, remembering uh, that we have discussed uh, in the transfer, uh, not in in this uh, mode of transfer. Some other transfer uh, we have discussed. Anyone remembering that this one, uh, this point, I/O interface, uh, I/O interface. What are the uh, how many ways? Uh, there we discussed possible ways. I go interface possible ways. I go interface. Anyone remembering that? No one remembering. That was uh, that was our first one. Uh, very first uh, station. That was a unit. Uh, uh, Anyone remembering this one? I O bus and interface modules. There we discussed isolated versus memory mapped I O. This, this you should not be forgetting here. Till at least uh, you finish not your uh, exams. Here uh, I O isolated versus memory mapped I O. If you go here somewhere. This one here, I/O versus memory map. In this, we have, uh, you know, the first method. The computer has the independent sets of data, address, and control bus. This is. Are you remembering anyone uh, whether able to recollect? Yes, sir. Uh, in this memory map, where is that memory map? Isolated versus memory map. So somewhere, this one here. Computers with memory mapped I/O can use memory type instructions to access I/O data. It allows the computer to use the same instructions for either input, output transfers, or memory. The advantage is that, like that, we have discussed. Meaning, from this, what I am trying to tell you people, how I am relating all these devices here, these devices, these devices here. This device, the I/O devices. We can have three ways of uh, communication uh, with these devices. Those three ways are uh, where well, three ways. This uh, this one. These are the three ways. I/O interface. We can perform I/O interface with this with this three methods. One is having separate I/O bus, and uh, you know, totally address is separate, uh, data is separate, control lines are separate, and the other is uh, uh, I address and data. They are same, but having a separate control lines. But in the third case here, in this case, all uh, same. Your address bus, data bus, and control bus are all are same. In this third case. What will happen? Your uh, uh, I/O devices are treated as registers. Registers are there actually in the memory. So them, this uh, first two methods will treat uh, registers separately. I/O devices separately. But when we carry uh, this one memory mapped I/O, then I/O devices themselves are treated like a registers, like a memory. So this point we have discussed here at this stage. So you have to remember those are important concepts. You cannot forget like that. So yeah, that's what here we are in this point. Uh, this one I/O interface. In this I/O interface, all registers in the DMA, all registers in the DMA appear to the CPU as I/O interface registers. 
that is what happening that's uh, that is like a memory map to the sort of communication does the cpu can read from or write into dma registers under program control via data bus so this entire summary is uh, before summarizing this uh, let us come to conclude this one. the dma is first initialized by the cpu after that the dma starts and continues to transfer data between memory and peripheral unit until the entire block is transferred the dma is first initialized by the cpu here in earlier case here we have said here that the address register contains an address to specify the desired location this is one thing the word count register holds the number of words to be transferred this is the second thing and this will be incremented address will be incremented and this word count will be decremented till it becomes zero so all these activities are happening in the dma in the dm once this dma controller has got the con uh, hold of that uh, buses all these activities are happening so about these activities we are talking here the dma is first initialized by the cpu once it is initialized meaning, meaning that bus grant is uh, given to the dma that is nothing but initialized after that after once bus grant is uh, given to the dma that is initialized after that dma starts and continues to transfer data between memory and peripheral unit until the entire block is transferred enter block is transferred that is known through this one when it is zero meaning all blocks are transferred the initialization process is essentially a program consisting of io instructions that include address for selecting particular dma registers this initialization how this is happening through a program this program is consisting of io instructions this program is having some io instructions that include address for selecting particular dma registers the the cpu initializes the dma by sending the following information through data bus so how it is uh, transferring the control bus control cpu to the dma through initialization process this initialization process itself is happening how by executing one some io instructions so what is that have doing this cpu cpu initializing granting Uh, releasing the bus to the DMA through IO instructions execution. CPU initializes the DMA by sending the following information through data bus. During this IO instructions execution, this this one through four activities are happening. First is the starting address of the memory block where data are available for read or write data are to be stored. So this starting address, this paint in the last session we discussed. let us say io device wants to come write something in the memory some some memory is a 0 to some 256 but among this 64 to 128 in this location this io device wants to write or wants to read from that location so that is the starting address the starting address of the memory block where data are available for read or where data are to be stored this io device wants to read from that location or it wants to write in that particular location that is nothing but the starting address this is happening this, this information is updated first very first the second one is the word count which is the number of words in the memory block this memory block 64 to 128 how many in each uh, memory location in the 64 is a memory location in this memory location we have one word like that 64 then 65 all through 128 uh, so we have in every location a word so how many words are there that word word count so which is the number of words in the memory block that information is key. next is control to specify mode of transfer such as read or write so in this whether to whether to read or whether to write so which which one, which activity that is looking for this io device so that control information 
नेक्स्ट फोर्थ वन इज ए कंट्रोल टू स्टार्ट the dma transfer finally this is the transferring this uh, this uh, bus control that cpu was having at there that will be re re relinquished or released to the dma that is nothing but a control to start dma transfer all these four steps already we have seen through that uh, paint software last session i discussed so these four steps will happen somebody asked at that time also Uh, how actually DMA is going to uh, obtain the starting address? So this is how it is going to. The starting address is stored in the address register. The word count is stored in the word count register, and the control information is in the control register. All these registers we have seen already here. Starting address in the address register, word count in the word count register. Control in this control register whether to read or write such signals. So one, two, three. These are there. Here, these registers are there. One needs to start it, hold the address, and the how many uh, that words needs to be transferred, and the more read or write. So that is what this one here. The starting address is stored in the address register. The word count is stored in the word count register. And the control information in the control register. Once the DMA is initialized, the CPU stops communicating with the DMA unless it receives an interrupt signal or if it wants to check how many words have been transferred. This also we have seen. This one here, this interrupt. Here is the CPU, and CPU wants to uh, how CPU will know that uh, this DMA has done its job. Through interrupt mechanism, this control DMA controller having this control logic hardware inside. Once this is over, that is the read, write, whatever that operation is over. This if through interrupt, it will tell the CPU that it has done its job. So that this control of this bus, address bus, data bus, this control can be transferred to the CPU now. So that is. Whether this is uh, uh, this DMA has done its job of transferring the data from I/O devices to the memory or not? So both possibilities are there. Here, yeah, that's why once the DMA is initialized, the CPU stops communicating with the DMA unless it receives an interrupt signal or if it wants to check how many words have been transferred. So that is how this is happening. So all this is about. So far, DMA controller. Guys, there who are paying attention, see in external exam, the direct memory access is becoming solid. Ten marks question or uh, eight marks question, wherein we have to write this DMA controller. One one is DMA controller, the other is DMA transfer. Where we have here. Hello. This one here. During DMA transfer, here somewhere you have DMA controller. Okay, this one. This one. You have DMA controller inside this uh, DMA. About this DMA controller, so far we discussed this one, figure four. I mean this figure, this one, figure. This is the DMA controller. What is that DMA controller is doing? Why this DF? Why this? Register select. Why this read? Why this write? Why this br? Why this bg? Why this interrupt? Why this address register? Why this word count register? Why this control register? Why DMA request? Why DMA acknowledge? All these things are part of DMA control. That is what so far in in today's session we have seen all this uh, from here beginning from uh, beginning from yeah, yeah, figure four. From there on, everything we have seen, everything here. The BG we have seen, read we have seen, WR we have seen, and uh, BG we have seen, and uh, here this registers here, where uh, you know, address register, word count register, and your control register. Here we said this, uh, this control information in the control register. All we have seen, and uh, and these four steps, how this is uh, CPU is initializing the DMA. This we have seen. 
arm with the DMA controller. So the, the, the other part is DMA transfer. In this DMA transfer, once this initialized, how this transfer is taking place? Again, the same. This is almost like uh, so far already what we have discussed. So, but the point is here, DMA is categorized as a two. One is a DMA controller and DMA transfer. Put together will come for 10 marks solid. Sometimes only DMA controller for 5 marks. Write about DMA controller. Right? Sometimes write about DMA transfer for 5 marks. If you, depending upon marks, you have to decide. If 10 marks, then you have to write DMA controller, then DMA transfer. Specifically, they will mention write about DMA controller. Then only DMA controller, this, this, uh, this diagram. This diagram and the so far explanation what we have carried. That is right, that is enough. If they are specifying DMA controller, if they are uh, specifying DMA transfer, then this topic that we will discuss now shortly, that you have to write. If they are mentioning only write about direct memory access, DMA and marks are 10 marks. At that time, DMA controller and DMA transfer, both you have to write. So remember, I'm mentioning this so for every topic. Uh, this, was, this was my practice to tell you, depending upon marks, how to judge. So that be careful about this is very important topic. So we have covered this one. This is done. We have, we have done with DMA controller. Now coming to the DMA transfer. The position of DMA controller among the other components in the computer system is illustrated in figure 5. So what is figure 5? This is figure 5. In this figure 5, you have uh, this one. I'm just trying to pick that. Uh, yeah. What's that? Laser point. So you, your CPU is this. In, so far, I was talking to you with the CPU inside memory. So now it is explicitly shown here. This is the memory. This is CPU. This is inside the this entire thing is a your computer inside your computer now additionally this is a dma this is a another chip this this together this is one chip this is another chip this is another chip these are chips your cpu chip your ram chip your dma chip ic's ic's integrated circuits and all these are inside your computer and here are ports to which you plug in your I/O device. This I/O device is not on the board. I/O device is off, uh, it's outside. So outside means your pen drive, your uh, mouse, your uh, external keyboard, USB keyboard. These are the I/O devices. You plug into your computer here. Inside your computer, this DMA chip. There is a chip IC. There is a chip your CPU. There is a chip your RAM, like that. So now in this. We have these connections here. If you see carefully these connections here, they are going to this this read control line. Read control line. If you also giving a signal, your uh, DMA is also giving a signal. And to write here, if you see the write here, this DMA ha also has got write, and uh, CPU also has got write. Signal. And these are coming to this this line this control line now coming to the address dma also has got address and your cpu also has got address you carefully observe these are coming to this address lines here address lines these are address lines you see carefully here address lines now coming to the final one data you see this one here particularly this data data is also going to this ram and also coming here this way, this, this one, sorry, uh, this is address. I was talking about this is address. Now, data is here. Data bu data bus is this one, data line. This, this entire line where our uh, uh, pointer moves. So this data bus is connected to CPU here this way. And here this one. This, this is your uh, DMA. So that also is connected. And that is this data was throughout going this way is also going to your uh, RAM 
and is also connected here straight to the your IO bus. Important. This these concepts are important. Uh, if you in external exam, this carefully if you draw, people will see whether the fellow has connected read and this read DMB read, to the read uh, control line or not here. Yeah. This and the right here from DMA as well as from uh, this one uh, connected to right control or not and going to this or not and likewise. So be careful about that. And so far we were talking about CPU will initialize through address bus. Here this is this one if you see carefully. Uh, this is connected to address here. This address here. And this is connected to address select here and this address select is in turn connected to your ds that is uh, dma select and this one uh, register select okay so we have done with this hovering our mouse here all through this control signal read write address state all our control signals right all our uh, that memory bus uh, signals this is a complete memory bus here. All this, this, this one here, this one I am hovering here. This is a memory bus. Now, if you see the other other signals here, this CPU is giving a signal or coming a signal something happening here. See, bus request. Bus request is going to from uh, DMA to all through to this one. And bus grant here. If you see this bus grant is coming from the, it is if you see carefully arrow mark is also shown here and the arrow mark is also shown there meaning it's a uh, bus grant with both way communication and the, if you see the interrupt interrupt signal it is one way communication this dma is uh, giving a signal here saying that uh, this dma has done with the transfer of uh, memory so far what we are trying to uh, convey uh, this one we are trying to convey that this memory i was telling throughout uh, 64 to 128 this one this memory so in this memory uh, this io earlier used to communicate through the cpu now we are removing the cpu intervention through this vm how we are eliminating uh, through all this mechanism. You see the mechanism connected here. Uh, this IO device is requesting IO, this uh, DMA request. DMA uh, request should go from IO device to this one here, actually. This is vice versa. Or uh, sometimes uh, this may wants to write also. So here also arrow should have shown. Now, this DMA acknowledge should come from DMA to this IO uh, peripheral. This arrow should have been like opposite direction. Now, after this IO has requested to the DMA of this uh, uh, memory request that is maybe it wants to write in to the location 64 to 128 or uh, it wants to read from the 64 to 128 who is facilitating the communication between this memory and the IO directly here, this DMA is how that mechanism we have seen in the DMA controller that this uh, through this uh, DS that is DMA select and through register select and to this uh, bus grant and bus request select. So guys here what I'm trying to make the point here is in the DMA transfer, this block diagram is important. Let us summarize what I'm trying to make the point here. I'm trying to make the point in DMA transfer. Remember, I'm not talking about DMA controller now. DMA controller only this this figure. Only uh, this figure. So DMA controller. There shouldn't be any confusion. I'm not confusing. There shouldn't be any confusion. If you have any confusion, you unmute and talk to me. This DMA controller. In this DMA controller, what are their address register, word count register, control register, how this is request is happening from the IO device, and how this is DMA select is happening, how register select is happening. All that we have seen, how this is called, how the control is transported to the DMA. So this, this mechanism, the control of the bus, memory bus, 
is given to the DM. How this DMA knows through this mechanism, this address, word count, and control register, it knows what is the location that is to be read or write, and how many word count, and whether to read or write in this mechanism. So everything is part of the DMA controller. There should not be any confusion. Now coming to the DMA transfer, what we are trying to make the point here is the DMA transfer overall mechanism how it is. The entire DMA uh, mechanism, DMA mechanism is in this DMA mechanism controller also included. That's why we put here this figure. Direct memory access controller. This is the controller. And we are showing how buses are connected here. These buses are connected from the CPU, from the DM. This is actual, this portion, this portion where I am currently ha hovering my mouse. These are the actual buses. This bus control, earlier CPU was having it. Forget about for a while, this, this portion is not there. I am where I am hovering my mouse now. Starting from this point, my mouse. To entire this, this, this portion, suppose say, there is no DMA, this portion. Now, who is having the control over this bus here? Only CPU, right? CPU having the bus control. In that case, this IO, if it wants to write anything inside the memory, or if it, it wants to read anything from the memory, it cannot request this way. It cannot have direct communication like this. There should be a communication also, if, uh, uh, apart from this, there should be a communication also to the CPU, which is not there here, because DMA has come in, into the picture. That's why uh, this is happening via DMA. So, in DMA transfer, the entire picture we are showing, that uh, these buses are connected to CPU as well as to the DMA, that is one thing, and these requests are going how going to the CPU, how DMA is requesting to the CPU and how CPU is granting the request to the DMA, that also shown. And this memory also shown, how this memory is connected to the IO device. And this, how memory, uh, this IO device is requesting to the DMA instead of CPU. Remember, that is called DMA transfer. This figure, if you draw neatly, say uh, for uh, uh, 10 marks it has come. This figure neatly by putting a like this title figure DMA transfer in computer system neatly this figure and DMA controller neatly uh, this figure the, this figure if you draw and fewer points about this five points about this one and five points about this DMA transfer if you write that is enough for uh, bagging the ten marks. Figures are important. What the point, ultimate point is? Figures, these two figures are important. That is the point that I made. And the difference also I made. So it's a time to wrap the session, guys. So, but I cannot rush simply uh, telling you, uh, like, uh, you know, DMA controller, come on. Uh, this is, uh, we have done with uh, DMA controller now, come to the DMA transfer, read out this. I just want to make you the things clear, telling you that this is controller and the transfer means overall picture overall picture here that needs to be under DMA transfer and how this buses buses are connected this is actually this, are, this portion where I am hovering bus mouse this is a uh, bus actually this bus is connected to the CPU how it is connected how it is also connected to the DMA so I have to make the things clear that's why I did not rush to straight DMA transfer theory. Hope things are clear. I will take.